Today's headlines. Congress is likely to pass a reenacted national budget for 2018 due to disagreements in realignments. The Department of Transportation may cancel the franchises of jeepney operators that will join the transport strike on December 4 and 5. A Davao City Councilor proposes selling condoms in vendo machines in public restrooms to stop the spread of HIV. And about 40,000 children are expected to play simultaneously in the celebration of World Children's Day next year. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Congress may have to pass a reenacted budget if both House and Senate panels cannot reconcile the disagreeing provisions of the proposed version of the 2018 national budget. The Bicameral Conference Committee on Thursday faced a hurdle on realignments made in the budget for next year. Senators and congressmen opposed a proposed 50 billion peso cut in the 2018 budget of the Department of Public Works and Highways for right-of-way or row acquisitions. They also opposed the Senate's realignment of the 900 million peso allocation for Oplan Double Barrel for the Philippine National Police to the housing projects for the police and military. House Appropriations Committee Chair Carlo Nograles said the 2018 budget must be ratified before the Christmas break on December 13 to meet the December 19 deadline for President Rodrigo Duterte signing into law. Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez, however, said the House will take a hard stance on its version and will not be swayed by the opposition of the Senate. The Commission on Elections is optimistic of meeting the voter registration target of over 800,000 new regular and youth voters, which ended on Thursday. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said they are on track in meeting the estimated 500,000 regular and 350,000 Sangguniang Kabataan applicants. Latest figures from the Election and Barangay Affairs Department showed that they have received about 496,000 applications for registration from November 6 to 25. The Election Registration Board will review the applications for two weeks and then allow the filing of petitions for those disapproved. The registration for the May 2018 Barangay and SK polls resumed last November 6. Applicants aged 15 to 17 years are allowed to register as voters for the SK elections, while those who are 18 years old and above are preferred to register as regular voters. The Department of Transportation warns that PUV operators and drivers who will join the transport strike of a militant group Piston on December 4 and 5 may lose their franchises and licenses. Piston is protesting the implementation of the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program or PUVMP. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade lamented that Piston insists on holding strikes instead of joining dialogues on the PUVMP. DOTR spokesperson Lea Kiambao explained that transport strikes cause inconvenience to the riding public. She said, abandoning routes or lines and prejudicing commuters in the form of Tigil Pasada is among the grounds for revocation of franchises. Under the PUVMP, Jeepneys that are 15 years old will be replaced with Euro 4 engines or electrically powered engines with solar panels. These will also be equipped with CCTV cameras, a GPS navigation system, an automatic fare collection system, speed limiters, dashboard cameras, and Wi-Fi. Major transport groups as well as the majority of provincial transport cooperatives nationwide have shown support for the program. Groups supporting the establishment of a revolutionary government by President Rodrigo Duterte staged rallies in various provinces during the commemoration of Bonifacio Day. Here is our report. Groups supporting President Rodrigo Duterte gathered to call for the establishment of a revolutionary government in various provinces. Hundreds of residents in the Cordillera region assembled in Baguio City, pushing for the declaration of a revolutionary government. Attorney Jerry Marave of the Cordillera Hukbong Federal Movement of the Philippines supported Duterte's call for federalism. Councilor Michael Lawana 
co-organizer of the Rev Go for Cordillera Federal State Rally, compared the federal government to the Cordilleran's clamor for autonomy. Cebuanos staged a rally at Plaza Independencia in support of the shift to a federal government as a means to bring change into the country. Around 5,000 supporters of the Palawan for President Rodrigo Duterte movement also backed the declaration of a revolutionary government. Richard Arambolo, president of the movement's chapter in Puerto Princesa, claimed the collective force of the masses support for Duterte's pronouncements. About 1,000 protesters from Panay Island, led by the Hugpong Federal Movement of the Philippines, Incorporated, called for a revolutionary government to clean the government and attain change. Meanwhile, groups supporting a revolutionary government staged the RevGov Para Sa Masa rally in Bacolod City. Militant groups opposing President Duterte also held their own rallies in response. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Rom Dulfo. The Department of Foreign Affairs called out on North Korea to commit on a meaningful step towards peace, following its latest ballistic missile test early Wednesday. Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano expressed the Philippine government's concern over Pyongyang's missile launches. He lamented that North Korea's missile tests may increase tensions on the Korean peninsula. North Korea's ballistic missile on Wednesday launched from a facility in Saini and landed in an area within Japan's exclusive economic zone. The launch was the fourth one involving Japan in the 14th test for 2017 alone. Some 242,000 Filipinos are living in Japan, while about 65,000 Filipinos reside in Korea. The ASEAN, under the Philippines' chairmanship, issued statements urging North Korea to cease its weapons development and return to the negotiating table. Cayetano said, meaningful dialogue can only happen when such provocative and highly dangerous actions are stopped. President Rodrigo Duterte assured Vietnamese fishermen that the relationship between Vietnam and the Philippines remains very strong despite their involvement in poaching off Philippine waters. The president led the send-off for the five fishermen who were involved in the poaching incident in September. He acknowledged that these incidents could not be avoided, but he noted that there is a way for the fishermen not to stay too long in the country. For his part, Vietnam Ambassador to the Philippines, Lee Quoc Tuan, expressed gratitude for the act of goodwill by the Philippine government. He said the send-off is a vivid representation of the friendship between Vietnam and the Philippines, adding that the order to release the fishermen would surely bring happiness to their families. Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources National Director Eduardo Gongona said the fine for poaching was not imposed in view of humanitarian considerations. The fishermen prayed leniency as they had no means of paying the fine imposed. Still to come, the Philippine Economic Zone Authority registers 203 billion pesos worth of investments in January to October this year. A Davao City Councilor proposes selling condoms and vendor machines in public restrooms to stop the spread of HIV. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. The Office of the Civil Defense has been given a go signal by the AFP to resume its post-conflict needs assessment in the remaining barangays in Marawi earlier this week. 47 more barangays will undergo the damage and loss assessment, or DALA, in addition to the first 49 barangays completed. The Department of Social Welfare and Development continues to provide social services and assistance to the affected communities as the local government of Marawi continues to facilitate Kambalingan or IDP return. DSWD will also provide cash for work opportunities for returning IDPs in Marawi to help them get back on their feet. The task force would like to ensure the transparency and traceability of all the donations for Marawi 
be it from foreign governments or international and local non-government entities and individuals. Task Force Bangon Marawi's Finance and Resource Mobilization Support Group, led by the Department of Finance, is developing a systematic procedure to fast track the processing and distribution of both local and international donations in kind and cash for Marawi. The Department of Education strives to ensure that the affected youth would continue to learn despite their predicament. DEPED is also concerned about the learner's health, conducting school feedings and providing psychosocial first aid. To facilitate vital exchange of information regarding the situation in Marawi, focus groups or focus group discussions were conducted among the IDPs. As the holiday season approaches, we urge everyone to drop by and shop at the Department of Trade and Industries Bangon Marawi product store in Makati to help its exhibitors who are home-based IDPs here in Metro Manila. The Bangon Marawi product store features Maranao products such as brass wares, wooden furniture, wearables, Maranao woven products, jewelry, fashion accessories, and Maranao native delicacies. We can see the different departments of the government na ginagawa nila yung dapat gawin para matulungan natin yung ating mga kababayan sa Marawi City. Ito yung tinatawag natin na whole of government approach in alleviating uh, the uh, present condition of the uh, Marawi residents. Uh, basically, the focus of our uh, interventions are in food, water, electricity, housing, livelihood, and education. And we are uh, presently uh, constructing facilities like wet and dry market, place of worship, <coughs> health services, and uh, road networks. The Bureau of Immigration prevented a Chinese businessman from leaving the country over his involvement in the 6.4 billion peso shabu shipment seized last May. BI spokesperson Antoinette Mangrobang said Chen Ju Long, aka Richard Tan, is the subject of an Immigration Lookout Bulletin Order or ILBO. Tan was about to leave the country for Shanghai Pudong at the Clark International Airport in Pampanga early Thursday when he was intercepted by immigration personnel. Tan, along with 10 others, are facing charges filed by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency for allegedly facilitating the import of the 604 kilo Shabu shipment. An ILBO requires subjects to ask permission from the Department of Justice before they can be allowed to leave the country. Investments in the Philippine Economic Zone Authority increased by 89% in January to October 2017. PESA registered 203.2 billion pesos worth of investments from 107.3 billion pesos January to October 2016. Projects approved by PESA in the first 10 months of the year reached 484. Employment in PESA zones went up 1.38 million. Export revenues improved 9.7% to US dollars 38 billion this year. Investment in economic zone development almost doubled to 125.8 billion pesos. Growth in manufacturing investments was faster at 98%, amounting to 45.6 billion in the same period. Investments in information technology sector, however, dropped to 14.4 billion pesos. PESA Director General Charito Plaza said that investment pledges may further increase towards the end of the year. The Bureau of Customs filed smuggling charges against two persons allegedly behind the misdeclared shipment containing luxury cars that were seized at the Manila International Container Port in September. 
The Bureau said Julius Catalig, owner of Juger Jack Trading and customs broker Rodrigo de Guzman, allegedly tried to smuggle into the country two used Mercedes-Benz cars worth 7.8 million pesos. Yasser Ismail Abbas, executive director of the BOC Action Team Against Smugglers or Batas, said the two cars, wheel and tires that were seized on September 13 were declared as 10 packages of auto parts. The luxury vehicles have a total dutiable value of 4.1 million pesos and customs duties, fees and taxes worth over 3.6 million pesos. The two face a prison term ranging from 6 to 12 years and a fine ranging from 1.5 million to 15 million pesos. VOC Commissioner Isidro La Peña has ordered Batas to speed up investigations on erring importers and brokers and to file necessary criminal complaints against the culprits. The Department of Agriculture distributed 38.9 million pesos worth of equipment and post-harvest machineries in the Bicol region. Under the department's rice program, the DA distributed hand tractors with trailers, palai threshers, rice combined harvesters and tractors to farmers associations in Albay, Camarines Sur, Camarines Norte, and Sorsogon. Under the corn program, four-wheel drive tractors, mechanical corn shellers, cassava granulators, and cassava chippers were distributed in Camarines Sur, Masbate, and Sosogon. Meanwhile, distributed under the high-value crops development program were peanut shellers, knapsack sprayers, and tractors to farmers associations of Camarines Sur and Albay. Rodel Tornilla, DA Regional Technical Director for Operations, encouraged the beneficiaries to be responsible owners of the machineries, considering that these were given free. Those who will receive equipment next time would undergo a loan scheme with 2% annual interest payable within four years. The Department of Health encourages the public to undergo HIV testing to prevent the spread of HIV. Cases of HIV spiked by nearly 2,000 in just two months. Here is our report. The Department of Health, or DOH, reported nearly 2,000 cases of human immunodeficiency virus infection in July and August this year. In the latest report of the HIV AIDS and ART Registry of the Philippines, about 800 cases were recorded in July, while over 1,000 were reported in August. 95% of the new cases were men. 250 have developed full-blown acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS. 118 deaths were reported during the period. The National Capital Region topped the list of regions with the most number of HIV cases, followed by Calabarzon and Central Luzon. A total of 7,383 HIV cases were recorded nationwide in the first eight months of the year. This brings the number to 46,985 since AIDS was first reported in the country in 1984, with 4,556 progressing to AIDS and 2,303 resulting in death. The DOH has been encouraging free and voluntary testing so that those at risk would know their status and avail of antiretroviral therapy or ART. A total of 22,413 persons living with HIV are on ART. Those at risk are also given counseling in a bid to prevent and control the spread of the deadly disease. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. A Davao City Councilor proposed the selling of condoms in vendor machines to curb the spread of HIV in the city. Here is our report. The Davao City Council is looking into the possibility of including condoms in the vendor machines inside public restrooms. This was revealed by Councillor Mary Giselle Villafuerte, Chair of the City Council Committee on Health, following reports that Davao City is included in the top 10 list of cities with highest number of HIV cases in the country. Villafuerte, a medical doctor, said other countries already have condoms in public restrooms for those who need it if the need arises. She added that easy access to condoms can eliminate the risk of acquiring HIV. From January to June this year, 
230 people tested positive for HIV and undergoing treatment at the Reproductive Health and Wellness Center under the city government. Villafuerte said that the city needs new strategies to help lessen the chances of acquiring the virus. The city health office, together with Dr. Emmanuel Baja of the University of Mindanao, also launched a game app which will advocate awareness of HIV. The game, named Battle in the Blood, has 90 levels. Each level will help people understand about HIV and what you can do to stay healthy. The game also has stories about the different ways of acquiring the virus such as same-sex relationships, mother and child transmission, and more. Villafuerte said this game app is a new strategy that opens hopes of probably lowering the number of those people who acquired the virus. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, the International Labor Organization says 55% of people worldwide have no social security coverage. About 40,000 children are expected to play simultaneously in the celebration of World Children's Day next year. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. The LGU of Marawi City, in coordination with the Task Force Bangun Marawi, started to assist the return of IDPs and residences within, and residents within uh, the controlled area. The post-conflict needs assessment team of the Task Force Bangun Marawi has been conducting a survey on the damage, potential losses of invest, potential loss of investment, and the general impact of the siege and the crisis that came after it. It is essential, also essential, to maintain the access for the delivery of goods and the traffic of commuters within the city limits and adjacent municipalities of Marawi. It is therefore important also to maintain the road connectivity of these areas within Lano del Sur and therefore we cannot isolate the people of the province within the confines of our territory. Road network is essential to spur economic life and trading which we believe could expedite the recovery of Marawi in Lano del Sur. The provincial government of Lano del Sur in Marawi City will not limit the chance of our displaced women to learn new skills and eventually earn and manage their livelihood. By promoting the skills of making traditional Maranao garments, we do not only extend help to the victims, especially to the women, but will also preserve our heritage, which is the source of our identity and our pride. The provincial government of Lano del Sur initiated the provincial scholarship program and has granted full academic financial support to 500 elementary students, 500 high school students, 1,000 college students. In view, of in view of educating our children with the status of the siege and their role in, the re in rebuilding our city, we believe that countering the spread of radicalization among our youth must be put primacy, primal, primary consideration. To defeat violent extremism and violent ideology, which is the root cause of this war, we need to partner with our community, engage continuous, continuously with the stakeholders. We believe that the attainment of peace is not only and must not be limited as a job for our security forces, but it is, ev but it is everybody's concern. The Provincial Peace and Order Council has adopted several resolutions to counter the spread of violent extremism and radicalization among our youth. Thus, this early recovery stage of the reconstruction of Marawi, we need to reestablish community relationship, repair social relationship, and to rebuild social institution to further reinforce our narrative for a rehab plan that is conflict sensitive and peace promoting. A rehabilitation that, is, that will guide the process of social healing. The provincial government of Lano del Sur and the city government of Marawi City through the IPHO has been conducting medical missions and have been moving around municipalities across the lake by using the provincial mobile clinic since the siege started. When the time uh, arises na kailangan yung pondo na yon, it will just be uh up to the president to request from the Department of uh, Budget and Management para mabigyan ng dagdag na pondo itong uh, rehabilitasyon 
ng Marawi. The public uh, can be rest assured, lalong-lalo na yung mga kapatid natin na nasa Marawi, na sapat po ang pera ng gobyerno para sa pag-rehabilitate uh, ng Marawi. Pagka natapos yun, maipapactor in na natin ang total uh, damages, opportunity loss, and rehabilitation costs. Kukunin natin ngayon itong resulta ng post-conflict needs assessment. Ipapasok natin yung uh, LGU Master uh, Development Plan as well as the uh, Provincial Master Development Plan. So ang intayin po natin yung final na resulta na total comprehensive rehabilitation and reconstruction plan na gagawin ng NEDA. We can have and in part uh, and introduce this federal system by way of also making it sure that it will be responsive to our cultural differences and identities. It's a matter of necessity and protecting the, the civilians that would be what would, would put primacy uh, as far as uh, the national government would decide whether they will lift the martial law or they will maintain uh, impo the imposition of martial law uh, in Mindanao. A new report from the International Labor Organization, or ILO, showed that massive efforts are needed to ensure that the right to social security becomes a reality for all in many parts of the world. Only 45% of the global population is effectively covered by at least one social benefit. The remaining 55%, or 4 billion people, are left unprotected. The new research also show that 29% of the global population enjoys access to comprehensive social security. The other 71%, or 5.2 billion people, are not or only partially protected. Only 21 countries have achieved universal pension coverage. In the Philippines, 47.1% of the population was found to be covered by at least one social protection benefit. The report recommended an increase of public expenditure to extend social protection coverage, especially in Africa, Asia, and the Arab states. ILO Director General Guy Ryder said that denying social coverage as a human right is a significant obstacle to economic and social development. Barangay Hinebra hosted a free victory party with their legion of fans at the Phil Oil Flying V Center in San Juan City on Friday. The party is an extended celebration of Hinebra's PBA Governor's Cup title conquest. San Miguel Corporation President Ramon Ang stressed the importance of the fans in Hinebra's historic back-to-back -back title run. Coach Tim Cohn said the party is the team's way of giving back to its fans. Mark Agiwa, meanwhile, hailed Hinebra's fans as the best in the league. He said the team had been looking forward to spending time with them. The PBA Board of Governors is expected to resolve by next week the issue of the future of Chito Narvasa as the league commissioner. Outgoing PBA Board Chairman Mikey Romero hinted that the board may convene early in December to finally settle the score on whether Narvasa keeps his post or a new commissioner will be named for season 43. The Narvasa issue started when the majority bloc consisting of the league governors for the three MVP teams and four independent clubs called for an emergency meeting officially declaring the commissioner's post vacant. However, the board members of the other five teams expressed their full support to Narvasa. Romero also allayed fears that the PBA could end up in a lockout come December 17, the scheduled start of the 2018 season because of the issue. He assured that the new season will start on time. Romero is set to turn over the board chairmanship to NLEX Governor Ramoncito Fernandez. Some 40,000 children all over the country are expected to play together in celebration of the upcoming World Children's Day next year. Here is our report. The Philippine Sports Commission and the Philippine Sports Institute will bring the children's games to 40 cities and provinces on November 20, 2018 in celebration of World Children's Day. A total of 40,000 children will play simultaneously in all venues on that day. PSC Chairman Butch Ramirez said 
the World Children's Day event is, aside from other children's games that will be held in other areas in the country. They intend to reach every community before the term of President Rodrigo Duterte ends in 2022. Ramirez said, the children's games being at the heart of PSC, PSI's grassroots sports program, meets the requirements of the United Nations Medium Development Plan and the Philippine Constitution. It has also been recognized by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. The children's games, designed as a vehicle to promote peace, aims to bring children 12 years old and below to play together. Children from the marginalized sector, including children in conflict with the law, out-of-school youth, street children, and children displaced by war, and abused children are part of the program. Youth volunteerism is also promoted through the Ate and Kuya Sports Volunteers Program. Ramirez said they hope to leave a legacy of supporting the children's right to play and helping in the formation of values and character of future parents, policemen, and leaders of the country. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Abs Abando. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's headlines. Congress is likely to pass a re-enacted national budget for 2018 due to disagreements in realignments. The Department of Transportation may cancel the franchises of jeepney operators that will join the transport strike on December 4 and 5. A Davao City Councilor proposes selling condoms and vendo machines in public restrooms to stop the spread of HIV. And about 40,000 children are expected to play simultaneously in the celebration of World Children's Day next year. The holidays are coming soon. It's 24 days before Christmas. For more stories, please log on to www.pna.gov.ph or visit the PNA page on Facebook and Twitter. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.